So they just built a humanoid robot that can fold laundry, do the dishes, and basically work in factories as well. And it's backed by over $1 billion in funding. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So figure designs and manufactures humanoid robots. And the goal is to be able to do as much stuff a human can as possible in the physical world. We think of a lot of ourselves as like trying to give, this is kind of a creepy, but like trying to give AI body. Uh, how do we ultimately send robots out to the world to do everything from work in the commercial market and then ultimately we'll put a robot in every home in the world. Laundry, dishes, clean up the house, uh, basically everything that a human can do in the physical world over time we'd like to, a human to do. In late September, Time's cover shoot was a domestic affair with a humanoid robot called the Figure 3. It's the latest creation of Figure AI, a California-based startup backed by more than a billion dollars in funding which is building towards a future where humanoid robots make human labor a thing of the past. Time witnessed the figure three load a dishwasher, clear clutter, and fold clothes. But even in this tightly controlled environment, the robot often struggled. The dream of general robotics, it seems, is still a long way from becoming a reality. So there mm. were... Mm, interesting. Um, ...occasions where I was watching the robot folding towels and loading a washer. And it's kind of clear that it can kind of do those things pretty well, but there were times when one of the towels dropped out of the washer and it, it was unable to pick it up. So like, how do you get from there to your vision of general robotic overlord that can do anything you want it to? Yeah, overlord, nice. Um, <laughs> I think the short answer is we feel like data fixes almost all this at this point. And we've seen that in almost all the demonstrations we do where even in the early stages, like, uh, we, like we say towel folding or like the logistics use case, like it just like wasn't that great. It made a bunch of mistakes. As we add more data, it got like faster. It made less mistakes. Still had some mistakes there, and all that is sort of like asymptotically, like like basically approaching zero. Mm. It's like getting close to human levels in terms of like like we can run them for like hours and hours, and it just like performs really well. Large language models like ChatGPT proved that if you scale up the amount of data and computing power used to train a neural network, it would gain surprising new capabilities across the board. Figure is one of a group of companies attempting to apply that insight to robotics. The company is spending big to collect video data of humans performing tasks, like folding clothes and cleaning homes, in a bid to teach robots to do the same thing. The big question is, will it work? The company says early experiments have already yielded promising results. Some of the last generation of robot, the figure two, are already working in a BMW factory in South Carolina, moving parts that ultimately make it into the BMW X3. Uh, one of our core focuses in the, in the roadmap here is that how do we ship, ship robots basically into every consumer home in the world? Uh, we we want to do what we do all day in, in the home and just like I, things I hate, like I don't want to do laundry, I don't want to do dishes, I don't want to clean up the house. And we haven't really had any uh, like large breakthroughs in the home in terms of automation for like decades. So our, our view is that the robot will not only act as like your companion in your home, being able to share like very deep memory and be able to like basically talk to you basically just with speech, and then ultimately be able to do everything you do in the home that you don't want to do. But upon its launch this October, the figure three won't be ready for your home. Not only is the robot not yet useful enough to be an Android butler, but Figure says it also has many unsolved safety challenges. Large language models are notorious for sometimes going off the rails, and that controllability problem will extend to the systems that power humanoid robots too. There's also the problem of ensuring that the robot doesn't fall over, cause property damage, or injure its human cohabitants. Getting the robot to be extremely safe in the home long term is a really hard problem. I would say now we're tracking like almost like 15 different areas for safety. There's like a physical safety thing of the, like the system safety engineering needs to be done really well. There's like cybersecurity that we need to do really well. How do we do encryption at scale? We have a safety lead here that previously worked on basically mobile robotics. We have a cybersecurity lead that came from like one of the top groups in cybersecurity here in the U.S. Uh, they each have teams and we're basically trying to spend basically a large focus on trying to figure out how do we enter um, first, which will be U.S. homes and then global. Uh, yeah, man. So this is straight from their mouth, man. What they say, the goal, the company's goal is to put a robot in every home on earth. So they're trying to tell us exactly what they, what they want and what they're trying to do. Now I can tell you this right now, I'm black. Uh, they not gonna be in every home. I can tell you, like somebody gonna be like, that's not coming to my house. But you better believe there's somebody waiting in line right now long list is happening and i think what we're watching is the start of like one of the biggest labor shifts first 
right now in human history, right? So before they're in the house, they're in the factories. So before they're in the house, they're in the Amazon facilities and stuff. But most people have no clue that this stuff has already started. Now, uh, this company is called Figure AI, and they just released their third generation humanoid robot. That's why they had all three of them up there. And uh, that's why it's called the Figure 3 or the Figure 03. But that's not a prototype. He already told us, like, it's already doing real work inside the BMW factory. And it's backed by OpenAI, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Jeff Bezos. They've already raised over a billion dollars to make this human labor obsolete. Why? Because that's the goal. It's trying to save more money so they can make more money. Understand. And it, it is real. So this, so y'all know the backside of this. So these tech companies, what they're basically saying, that they're projected to spend over $320 billion this year on AI and robotics. That's a record high, $320 billion. And remember what Trump put into place for AI as well. So these people are betting big. Also, you got SoftBank just uh, announced a $5 billion fund dedicated entirely to humanoid robot development. They're not playing with us, man. <laughs> like, I I'm going to tell you this. Once this ends up working at scale and they check all them boxes off, it's a wrap. Every warehouse, every logistics company, every hospital, they're replacing labor. Well, all, all this labor, I'm not going to say all, right? But most of them will be replaced with machines that don't get sick. They don't complain. They come in on time. Well, wait, they don't ever come in on time because they're actually working 24-7. And that's just logical when it comes to owning the business, right? Do I want to have to deal with somebody who's always going to complain and make up an excuse and not come in? Or do I just get this robot over here? It's going to work until it literally breaks down. And then once it breaks down, it's going to cost me even less, right, than what I was paying for health benefits for this other human person. Or my whole staff. I already know. Y'all already been told. Y'all been told, hey, robots are decades away from replacing us as human beings. But all you got to do is look and see how fast AI in general has been moving, y'all. Like, I can't stop forgetting the picture, like or this video where Will Smith, three years ago, y'all remember when he was eating the spaghetti and it just looked trash. And then you look at how far that came. And you're like, bro, that was nothing. That was no time. I remember laughing hard at that Will Smith spaghetti video. Like, this is trash. But now people are complaining about Martin Luther King being used in Sora 2 because it looks too real. But, um, but that's a whole other thing. Anyway, like this figure three, uh, they're saying it actually doesn't just walk, but it's also learning as well using vision learning models, which is the same AI that powers chat GPT. And they're using that to understand this world just like a person does. Now, I'm being real. That's the scary part. <laughs> like, like, it's not just taking orders. It's making these decisions. And I'm going to tell you this, okay? Everybody's worried about AI taking the digital jobs. But the real thing that these people are betting on and the revolution is based in physical. Like, we know coders, that's, they can adapt. These factory workers can't. And so the real truth is it's not actually really about automation anymore. It's about replacement. And they're telling it to you in your face and you're not realizing it. But once these robots cost less than these workers annual salary, they're saying this is going to be about twenty thousand dollars. But I'm telling you, these companies ain't thinking twice. Sayonara, Arriva, Dirty. All right. They're cutting you out of there. And so when I'm doing this research and I'm looking at this stuff, these economists, they're already preparing for like robot driven unemployment. <laughs> so they're looking at productivity going up like crazy, right? Productivity up, yo money on, not. And, and a lot of these people are saying that they, we're going to need that universal basic income. I'm not really for that. You know, they're saying it's for survival going forward. But big people and small people are looking at the universal basic income as like, yo, this is good. I promise you it's good, but I'm not really good. I'm not really for it, but tell me something in the comments. If you are for it, tell me why. So I, I'm not, you might change my mind, but regarding the market is, is there people who are saying it's going to adapt just like all the other times, right? Like after the industrial revolution, it, it got better. 
my mind, I'm like, this time it's different because they can think, right? So they brought it in in the industrial revolution. Yo, this the muscle right now. It's moving around the facility. It's thinking over here, making a decision, uh, making a habit. It looks like a totally different game to me. I'm not going to hold you. But, you know, uh, what Figure AI is saying is that their mission is to give AI a body. Think about that. It's scary. So we already gave it intelligence, and now we're looking to give it mobility. To me, the next step, whether it's intentional or unintentional, is to give it an independence. That's what it's looking like, and that's all I'm saying. So, you know, if this video kind of opened your eyes to what's going on out here in these streets, go ahead and hit that like button. It's going to tell you that, you know, it's going to tell the algorithm, <laughs> the AI, that you want to see more of this type of stuff and more from me. The link to the time video that we watched is going to be in the description as well. Shout out to the content creator. But, uh, you know, uh, go ahead and click the first link in the description to check out Course Careers. If you need a new job before these robots get you, they got a discount for you. Click the link and check that out. But, y'all, if, if you thought the movements of, of this AI, right, the figure 03 was choppy, it's because it's not really ready yet. But I'm telling you, it's moving faster than you think. And you're going to look up and it might be too late because you forgot about this video. But either way, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.